Oh. Hello. I didn't see you there. Hello guys and girls, and welcome to a new tutorial. Yay! It's been a while, I'm sorry, I have been very, very busy, but, you know, I'm gonna try and start getting a little bit more content going your way. Before we do begin today's tutorial, uh, my VR whiteboard that I had on the marketplace, I'm removing it from the marketplace because I just don't have time to keep updating it. Um, so what I'm going to do, as an apology for being gone for uh, quite a lot of time, is I'm going to put a link in the description where you can download that for free. So there you go, everybody's going to get my VR whiteboard. Enjoy, have a play, look at how it was built. It was quite a complicated system, but there we go. So today's tutorial, what are we focusing on? We are going to be looking at particle parameters. That's right, particle parameters. So we're not going to be making a specific particle system, and we're not going to be making a specific material. Instead, I'm going to show you guys how we can get multiple results out of a single particle emitter using particle parameters. Yay! Right, so first thing that we're going to do is we're going to right click material m underscore dot, and we're just going to make the number one default material for beginning with particles, and that's just the the little radial gradient exponential. So we'll right click type radial gradient exponential and this is going to allow us to just get a little dot. We're going to right click again and find our particle color because we're going to need to use this to drive our particles color and alpha. We will plug the color pin straight into emissive color, hold M and left click for a multiply so that we can take the alpha of our particles and multiply that by our radial gradient so that we can control how see-through they are. And now we need to plug this into opacity, but we don't have this turned on yet. So what we're going to do is head to blend mode, translucent, and then shading model unlit, because we're not going to want these to be lit at all. And it's just going to be a little bit cheaper for us to render if they're not including the lighting. We're going to press apply and we'll minimize this down. Now we have a lovely little dot. So what we're going to do is we're going to add this to a particle system, right? Click particle system, P underscore parameter, call it whatever you want. I'm going to call it P underscore parameter. We're going to drag this into our little world here. There we are. But now we have it in our little world. It's lovely. It's doing its thing. Well, it's not because we haven't opened it up. If you double click to open this up, it will now initialize the particle system and we'll be able to see them in our world. Yay, particles. So what we're going to do first is we're just going to head to our required tab get our dot and plug that straight into the material. Now it's just going to take a second to change into the material here. And the reason it's got to do this is because by default, our material did not have the specific flags. You see here we have usage. When you first apply this material, it's going to turn this on for us. Because we didn't do this manually, it's just going to take it a little while to set that up for us. And now that's done. It's now flagged and compiled with the correct flag. So what are we going to do? We're going to make this customizable so that we can have a single particle system and have it look multiple different ways. So we can do this with just about everything. Now, some things aren't going to work as well as others, and I'll explain those when we get to them. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to head to our lifetime or in fact no we'll do spawn first so our spawn rate we just open this up you can see is set to a constant so we're constantly getting 20 sprites you can see this little number here might be a little bit hard to see on the screen we see it's flicking 20 out of 23 23 is the maximum we're ever going to get on screen at one time if we were to bump this number up you'll see that it will fly up a little bit so now we're getting 50 or 51 out of 53 which isn't a problem that's not too many sprites but that is what this little number means. It means that's how many we've currently got on screen. What we're going to do is we're going to take our constant and we're going to change this to a distribution float particle parameter. Click. Now you're going to notice we now have no particles. Zero. We have zero particles. They're all gone. Doesn't matter. Particle name, uh, parameter name rather, we're going to call this amount. And now our min and max inputs and outputs what we're going to do here is we're just going to increase this to a crazy number. So we're going to say maximum of a thousand. And that's just going to clamp the amount that we ever have. Now in here on our constant, we can give this a default value. So let's say we want a default value of 10. Now you can see that we have 10 particles, which is great. Not enough particles. We're going to really blow this out. 
But now that we have this set up, what we can do is we can save, head into our level, we'll select our particle system. Now over on the right hand side under details, you'll see that we have something called instance parameters, which has zero array elements right now. What we're going to do is we're going to click add element. We're going to open up this new little drop down here, which is just a zero and our name, we're going to call it amount. That's what we called our parameter. And the parameter type is going to be, normally it would be a scalar, but we're going to say scalar random just so we can get this it's been a little bit more uh, funky, I guess. So now what we're going to do is we're going to give this an amount, we'll say 50. And that's the maximum it's going to be able to spawn at once, but we're going to give it a low amount as well of maybe 10. So now when this particle system initializes, it can have either 50 as a maximum or 10 as a minimum. So we'll always get something slightly random coming from it. But now what we can do is we can hold Alt, left click and drag this, make a copy. And what we'll do is we'll say maybe this one we want, I don't know, 200 and maybe 100 as the minimum. And you can see now we're getting a lot more particles on the right hand system. So now we can control how many sprites we are using without making bespoke particle emitters. So rather than having two particle systems, we have one particle system that can have both options available to it. Go away, auto save. We don't want you. Right. Now we can do this with a lot of other things as well. So we'll open up our particle system more and maybe we'll do lifetime. Open up lifetime. You can see we have a minimum max because we have a uniform and this is just going to be uh, our scalar random. So scalar random is the same as a uniform. So we're just going to change this to a float particle parameter. We'll call this life and we're just going to give these clamped numbers as well. Now obviously, if you're going to be handing this particle system over to somebody else, don't go crazy and give other people like, you know, ridiculous amounts of uh, of clamping. Don't put like 10,000 seconds because you're going to end up with some crazy, crazy particle life. Zero, of course, being infinite. So this is why these particles just keep going. And our number here is just climbing. Oh, no. Why? The GPU, why? Well, these are CPU uses. The CPU, why? Anyway, constant. We're just going to give these a default of one so that we get what we were having before. Again, we will save down. We can pick one of our particle systems. Our instance parameters, we will add a new element to the array. We can call this life. Parameter time is going to be a scalar random. And you can see zero, zero. So we're just getting infinite sprites by sprites. There you go. And again, we can say maybe I want them to live between two and 0.5 seconds. So now we'll get some that die out really quick and some that last a little bit longer. Hooray! So there we go. You can see how we can really customize our particle system by using some nice little parameters. So life parameter type is our scalar random. And we're going to want this to be between 0.4 and 0.1. We want these to die really, really quick. So it's just like a little poof. Okay, so we just got a little poof and then a little wispy, wispy guy. So I mentioned at the start that there are some of these that aren't going to work properly. I'm going to explain what those are and why they don't work properly. The one that's a really major pain is color. So we're going to open up our particle parameter. You can see that we have a color over life. Now, obviously, if we were to change our distribution to a parameter, we're only going to be able to have a set number or a random number. We're only going to have a uniform or a constant. This isn't what we want. We want to be able to change these over the lifespan. So what we're going to do is we're going to delete color over life by color over life. Now we have no particles. Well, we do. They're just invisible. What we'll do, right click color, initial color. And this is what we're going to set to a particle parameter. Our max and uh, minimum outputs black and white is zero and one. So that is fine. And our constant, we are just going to set this to be white by default. Save this. Now, we're not going to be able to just control our color over life the same way. So we can't have a red going into a blue and a green going into a yellow just because of the way that this works. We can have them so that they can start at a different color and then always go back to the same color. But unfortunately, it's because of the way that scale works. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to right click, we're going to go to color again, 
I'm going to say scale color of a life. What this is going to allow us to do is it's going to take our initial color values, in this case, white being 111, and it's going to multiply that by whatever we put into here. So it's zero when they are alive, we are multiplying them by 111. And if we were to take our death point, we'll say our death point, uh, we'll, we'll bring this down a little bit, so 0 0.7 instead of when they die. We're going to multiply our colors by 0, 1, 0, and they should turn green. There we go, because we are taking the red and the blue values and we're multiplying them by 0, therefore turning them off. Same way if we were to do 0.5, we'd get a color in the middle. Now that's working perfectly fine, right? So, you know, if we wanted to make this turn to red, we can. <laughs> well, we can if we turn off all of the colors. We'll go from white to red. Now, if we minimize this down, you can see they're still going white to red, which is fine. And if we were to click on our particle system, add a new parameter, and call this color. I believe we named it. Did we name it? Or did we forget to look for color? We did not name it. Color. No. Minimize this down. Our parameter type, we're going to choose color. And now you can see that they are black and they're not turning to red. And the reason they're not turning to red is because black is zero, zero, zero. And if we were to multiply zero, zero, zero by one, zero, zero, we're still just going to get zero, zero, zero. If we change this to white, they will turn back to red. Now the problem arises when we add another color in. So if we were to say blue, they're no longer going to turn to red. Dun, dun, dun. And the reason they're no longer going to turn to red is because you see here, our default red value is 0 0.07. So we're just multiplying 0 0.07 by 1 and everything else by 0. So if you wanted them to go to a specific color, such as red, then what we would need to do is make sure that no matter what color we start with, so if we started with as close to blue as we possibly can, we would say 0 0.01 in the red, we just give it ever so slight amount of red. And then what we can do is open up our particle system here and in our scale color of a life, we will have to change the value of our red up to something high. So we said 0 0.01, which is 1% red. So we'll say 100. Now in our preview, we're going to get a glow because this is over a value of one now. But if we were to minimize this back down, we should see that now they're going from blue to red. And that's because of the way that it's multiplying things. So being able to customize the colors perfectly is really really awkward the only way that you're really going to be able to do that is either through the material or through the blueprint so color unfortunately isn't something that we have full control of with our parameters most of the things we do we can set most of it up pretty easily including our velocity so if we say our velocity is a particle parameter we can call this yellow for the velocity this down we will add a new parameter call this Bellow. And now if we were to just set this to a vector, we would just have them all fly in the same direction. I don't think we gave this any limits though, so they're not going to move anywhere for now. Oop. Give this a high limit. Oh no, we've limited it to just. Here we are. Uh, who cares if that's at 100? I certainly don't. And we'll give this a one, which is just going to make them move in a bit of a straight line. See here, they're just. Sliding in a perfect straight line. They're not living very long though. Not really going to be able to see it. So we'll just bump these values up. And you can see now we're not getting that nice wispiness that we were before. And the reason that we're not is because our velocity by default is a uniform, which, as we know, just requires a random. Now we can say 5, 5, 50, negative 5, negative 5, 20, and that should give us our default values that we had before or it would if we hadn't been a dope and limited ourselves our minimum output is zero so we're going to set this to 1000 our particles in here are just going to fly away oh, <clears throat> oh. <laughs> right so we don't want to multiply our minimum get out of there Right out. All right, so one third. We're just going to give these. So there we go. 
And now you can see we're getting our nice wispiness that we had before. So there we go. Hardcore parameters. Have a play around with them. Uh, obviously, you can do that for pretty much everything, including their location. You can have them spawn at a random location. You can have them spawn uh, in a cylinder spawner with a random radius, a random height. Same with a sphere spawner. You can have them spawn in a random radius. Play around with them all. Check them out. There is one little bug, however. Uh, sometimes. Let's see if we can get this to happen now. If we were to change our color here to something else. If we were to go ahead now and look at our vector here, you can see that it's changed our vector to zero, which obviously we don't want. For some reason, if you change a color parameter, it resets your other vectors. Uh, I don't know why. This is something that Epic need to, need to fix. But there you go. Have fun with that, guys. It's nice to have done you a little video. I know it's not something specific, but this is a really, really helpful tool. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.